Come on in. Share this as soon as you see it. Made it out all right. Coming to the end of the year of 2021. It is Monday's meal. Manner to move you to your life mandate. Somebody say it. I made it out all right. My goodness in here. That was John P. Key and Zakari Cortez reminding us that you have made it out all right. I'm Dr. Ray Johnson, your host tonight. Wanted to spend some time with you for Monday's meal. And spend some time tonight talking about our new series about questions. And most times, we oftentimes, we ask heaven questions. But really, sometimes we aren't too prepared when heaven begins to ask us questions. And so tonight, want to spend some time in that. If you haven't shared this quickly, Go ahead and do so right now. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for tagging a friend. It's Monday's Mill, manna to move you toward your life mandate. You know, when it comes to questions, we've been talking in the Walk of Dominion about how questions really come to do three things in our lives. They come to reveal our proximity with God. And then it comes to begin to remind us about our uh, being our attitude with God, our proximity was has a lot to do with where we are in terms of our relationship with him. And the very last one, our performance with him, that's in terms of how we're functioning. We've been in Ezekiel chapter 37, and where we're talking through the book of Ezekiel in chapter 37, we look at that text and we know it's the story about the dry bones. But when you consider looking at it from the perspective of a question, God begins to say to Ezekiel, son of man, can these dry bones live? And with a little bit of wisdom and probably some life experience, Ezekiel responds back to God and says, Lord, you know, you know whether or not the dry bones can live or not. And that's a, a, an important point I want to make sure that we understand tonight because God knows he sees all, he knows all, and he knows everything. Thank you for tuning in on tonight. But then it goes on to say, God says to Ezekiel, good, I'm glad you understand. I need you to prophesy to the bones. And I said all of that to say the second phase of it is exactly what I want to talk about tonight. Because we oftentimes talk about the bones, but we don't spend too much time talking about the second part as we did this past Sunday in the Walk of Dominion. If you haven't shared this, I'm giving you a chance to do it right now. I want to talk to you about the second part about why is it that God says to Ezekiel, not only do I want you to speak to the bones, but I want you to speak to the wind. That's right. He says, prophesy not only to the bones, but prophesy to the wind. And there was this point in yesterday's message where we talked about sometimes you've got to command the wind. You've got to command the atmosphere. You've got to begin to give direction to how you want things to become fluid in your life. And you know what? Today I was sitting still. I got to thinking about that thing. Why would God say in the text, prophesy to the wind? Come on. I'm glad you're tuning in tonight. Here is my first one about why he would say prophesy to the wind. And here it is tonight. He would say prophesy to the wind because the wind brings a refreshing. Now we understand that in this text, the wind is a euphemism or a metaphor, if you will, for the Holy Spirit. And it says, prophesy, speak to the Holy Spirit so that there can be a refreshing wind that blows. Remember, in the text, this particular text is the Valley of Dry Bones. It's the army of Israel that tried to stand against Nebuchadnezzar when he sent Nebuchadnezzar in to destroy all of Israel. And I mean, they plundered everything so much so that the artifacts that had deemed to be holy and set aside for the use of the administration of the sacrifices in the temple, those were destroyed and were being used as a part of revelry on their way back into Babylon. And the spirit of God picks Ezekiel up, sets him down in the valley and God begins to talk to him with questions. Can I just stop for a moment? 
for those of us who've been into this season of a tough time of a pandemic, it almost seems as if we've been left with dry bones in our lives. We've been left with broken promises. We've been left with dreams scattered. We've been left with difficult moments as loved ones have passed on and as ideas and witty concepts have not seemed to come to fruition or the things in which you're believing the Lord's been promising you in your life. Those things have seemed like the bones have become brittle and the foundations of those things have been destroyed. But God says to Ezekiel, I want you to speak to the wind. And the reason that you speak to the wind is because the wind brings a refreshing in your life. My goodness in here, hearts and thumbs up inside of the chat. If you need a refreshing in your life, I want you for the remainder of this week to begin to speak to the wind of your circumstances and begin to speak a refreshing over there. As a matter of fact, tonight I prophesy a refreshing for you that the dry bones of your life, your experience your moments will begin to come to life again and they'll begin to live again. Number two, keep in mind what I said tonight, that this was the army of Israel that was trying to defend Jerusalem and they were plundered over. I don't know who you are tonight, but you've been trying to defend your keep, if you will. You've been trying to hold fast to what it is that you believe the promise of God is in your life. And it almost feels like you're being plundered over. So number two, speaking to the wind brings about redemption. My God in here. Number one, refreshing. Number two, a redemption. Here is why I say that. Because by the time we get to about verse 9 and 10 of Ezekiel 37, when he speaks to the bones and then he begins to speak to the wind, this rattling begins to happen and things begin to connect bone to bone. I got to preaching inside of that text and I talked about how scattered the bones were and how broken up that they were. But the text is real clear that each bone that was connected to another bone in the body for functioning begin to come from different places, which means amending had to take place. And that's exactly what a refreshing brings about is amending. But by the time it was over, there was a full army standing up ready to go to battle. My God in here. And that is redemption. I want to tell you that you're about to get some, if I could put it in this language, some get back against the enemy of your life. You're getting ready to get some get back and you're getting ready to defend your keep again. And you're getting ready to extend out God's kingdom in your life and live out the blessings and promises of God that he's already got set aside for you. You're getting ready to get some get back. Somebody put it inside of the chat tonight. Redemption, redemption, redemption. I'm getting, I want to say to you tonight to look to the hills from what's come with your help because your help comes from the Lord or another verse that says your redemption draweth nigh. It's coming close to you. God's getting ready to allow you to get some get back against your adversary. So number one, you need a refreshing. That's why you speak to the wind because the wind brings about a healing from the previous experience you've had before. And number two, you speak to the wind because the wind allows you to get some redemption. Some things begin to come back and are beginning to be made whole again in your life. And he here is the third one. I'm telling you, I love this one. This is my one right here. You're about to get a reward. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if you really understand what I'm saying to you tonight. There's about to be a reward for you in your life. Along with redemption, that's the hookup. But here on the reward, some of you have lost honor from a previous experience of something that you've already walked through. You've lost honor. Maybe it was a job loss. Or, or, or maybe it was a failed business, or maybe it was a denial letter that you didn't get into the school that you thought, or maybe it was a loan that you were applying for, for a mortgage that got denied, or a contract that didn't come through, and you put all of your eggs into that basket, and it seems like you don't have a chance to be able to save face. I want to say to you tonight, you speak to the wind, there's going to be a refreshing, there's going to be redemption. And I'm telling you for the last half of this second half of the year in this last quarter, you're going to come out of this year with some honor. I don't know who this is for tonight, but I do know honor is getting ready to be your portion. 
a reward is getting ready to happen for you for being faithful. A reward is going to happen for you for sticking to it. A reward's going to take place for you for being tenacious. A reward is coming your way. Honor is coming back to you because of your resiliency, simply because you speak to the wind as well as speaking to the bones of your life. This has been Monday's Meal. I hope that it has been a blessing to you. Make sure that you tune in and share this with somebody else. Because I just want to tell you, you made it out. You're finishing out the year strong. You came through it all right. Refreshing, reward, redemption, all of that is your portion. Share this with somebody. And listen, don't forget to wake up Tuesday morning. 6 a.m. with Lady. She'll be there talking to you about how to pray again. And make sure you're with us on Wednesday night. I'm Dr. Ray Johnson. I hope that this word has been a blessing for you. Manna to move you toward your life mandate. Just want you to know you making it out all right. God bless you. Take care, my friend. Bye-bye.